When out looking for arthropods, it's a good idea to relax and take your time. Things may not come easy, you may go days or weeks or months without taking a single good photograph, but Take a look at everything around you. Look at each branch, each blade of grass. Look at how the light comes shining through the leaves above you. You may see silhouettes. And most importantly, you get to know arthropod behavior. You'll see how certain bugs will find perches, how close you can approach some of them. But then again, these are wild animals, and there's no way to predict exactly how they're going to behave. Each subject can be different. But thankfully, with digital photography, there's no penalty or restraint by film cost, so there's no excuse not to take hundreds and hundreds of photographs, and eventually you'll get that one good shot. My current camera consists of a flash and a homemade flash diffuser, um, a set of extension tubes, and a reverse prime lens, a 28mm, and the camera body, which is a Pentax K200D. Before long, you'll realize how incredibly skittish some of these little bugs can be. For example, this little 5mm long robber fly might be moving in for focus and pop, completely disappear, it will vanish. But if you stick with it long enough, you take enough images, you can eventually get something usable out of them. Here's another image of almost just the compound eyes, and that's a pretty high magnification. Anyone is capable of doing this. It, you don't need the greatest lens, you don't need the newest camera out there. Equipment doesn't matter, and neither just talent to some extent. It's about perseverance, persistence, and most of all, the uh, sheer volume of shots taken. I've said it before, but the more shots you take, the better images you'll have to choose from in the end. And uh, some bugs are just fairly cooperative uh, horse flies sometimes don't mind you getting a little bit close to them or bugging them too much uh, for example this male Tabanus lineola horsefly, the striped horsefly you can see why it's called that That's, this is just the 28mm lens reversed here uh, here's the uh, 28mm on a set of extension tubes and this image is focus stacked from about 10 images of a live horsefly uh, you can see all the individual compound lenses. Here's a female Tabanus lineal horsefly. Uh, female horseflies are uh, distinguished from males from their scissor-like biting mouth parts and their compound eyes are uh, separated. And their compound eyes um, can be highly iridescent and deeply saturated with beautiful bands of alternating colors, greens and reds and purples, and all those individual lenses. It's pretty amazing. I'll move away from flies for a little bit. Here's a Tutelina simulus jumping spider from the family Salticidae, and uh, he's only about four or five millimeters in body length, and pretty active little guys. They signal their arms around. They might be little ant mimics, but I chose a low angle to get the blue of the sky in the background, and he found a red mite and made for a nice photograph. Um, here's a young Phidippus jumping spider, and they'll find little things to eat, and once they reach adulthood, uh, that's when the real wild hairs and ornamental tufts on their legs and cephalothorax are really apparent. Jumping spiders are pretty curious little guys. They'll investigate things, and they love jumping on the uh, camera lens, looking at the reflection. Here's an adult male Phidibus putinami jumping spider. And, uh, in terms of coloration and ornamentation, it's beautiful. The eyes of, uh, jumping spiders are... Uh, they have internal retinas, so when you get down low and look in their eyes, washes of red will sometimes kind of float behind their lenses. Here's an adult female Phidibus mysticeus jumping spider with pretty amazing uh, tufts of hair on the cephalothorax. Here's an adult male Phidibus mysticeus jumping spider with uh, interesting coloration and markings. Here's a little Habernatus coacatus male jumping spider hanging out some red leaves showing off his red fangs. 
That's the abdomen of a Phytopus apachianus jumping spider. And those guys are velvet ant mimics. And here's a female Phytopus putinami jumping spider and zooming in on her interior median eyes, which are quite clean and highly reflective. You can see my fingers pulling away a leaf. This is a Paraphidbus aurentius jumping spider with pretty massive glycerin fangs. A leaf hopper. A pink color variation. We usually see deep blue on the species. That's zooming out from the compound eye of a pretty decent sized damselfly. And you see in the center of the head there are the simple eyes which are different than compound eyes. The mouth parts of dragonflies can kind of make it seem as though they're smiling sometimes. Here is another species of Tabanus horsefly. It's a female, and I don't know which species it is. They all look the same to me. They're difficult to distinguish one from another. And that is the pseudopupil beneath the compound eyes of a Stagmomantis carolinus mantis and uh, pretty alien looking. That's a Triorla interrupta robber fly feeding on a dragonfly. And those are some pretty large insects. This is a Vespula squamosa, also known as the southern yellow jacket queen or wasp. So in conclusion to all this, uh, macrophotography is time consuming and difficult and physically exhausting, but it's not just for a select group of people, it can be relatively inexpensive, you don't need that great of equipment, and uh, it just takes patience and time. Uh, all of my photographs are of live, healthy, unposed arthropods. Um, and if I can, I usually photograph them where I found them. Or if I don't, I replace them where I did find them, originally. If you'd like to see more photography, look at some of my artwork, or hear some bad music, go to thomasshahan.com. Or just to see bug photos, go to flickr.com slash opoterzer. Thanks.